So now we proceed with the next talker, Professor Nevena Ileva from the Institute of Information and Communication Technologies at the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences. Uh, um, she works in the field of uh, solving physical problems in biomolecular interaction modeling. Uh, she's interested in protein folding, geometrical analysis of anti data of macromolecules binding. Uh, interactions in immu immunoactive complexes, antimicrobial pe pe peptides, and other uh, molecular modeling problems. So she's also um, active in the high performance computing uh, field, uh, interested in developing of, uh, HPC tools and techniques for uh, molecular modeling. Uh, Nevena, Professor Nevena Ilev is going to present us. Uh, uh, a talk uh, titled In Silico Study of the Anti Inflammatory Action of Heparin within the COVID 19 context. So, um, you can. Uh, Sorry, Professor Lima. Uh, thank you. Uh, am I sharing the screen? Uh, is it full screen? I think no. No. Uh, yes, now it should be. Should be okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Elena. First of all, I want to, to congratulate the organizers of uh, this school for the really wonderful event, uh, very well organized and with very versatile and uh, fruitful program, interesting program. And of course, thank the post for the possibility to present some recent results uh, of uh, our research, uh, which is uh, in the inspired, so to say, motivated by the uh, pandemic we all sit in at the moment, uh, but it's actually relevant also for in a more general context. So I'm going to present uh, the results, as you see from the title of the talk, uh, of some uh, in silico study of the anti-inflammatory action of heparin within the COVID-19 context. This is a uh, collaboration, uh, collaborative work, a research done in, done in collaboration with uh, uh, my colleague Elena. Uh, Lilkova, uh, our colleagues uh, Leander Litov and Pecho Petkov from the Sofia University, and Clement Ochritsky, uh, Miroslav Rangelov uh, from the Institute of Organic Chemistry uh, of the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, and Nadia Todorova from the Institute of, uh, uh, okay, bio, okay, sorry. <laughs> the name of the institute, you just had it in the previous talk. Uh, so uh, our interest uh, in this uh, uh, topic was, uh, of course, associated with the pandemic, uh, which uh, started uh, well already a year ago. And uh, it was uh, actually uh, the problem of uh, how to manage to cope with the very bad caused by this very nice virus. Uh, you see, uh, we have already heard some uh, details about the SARS-CoV-2 virus, but uh, the important point is that with uh, its 29 viral proteins, uh, it messes the work of over 300 uh, uh, well, 332 host cell proteins and is able to very, very rapidly uh, reproduce uh, once uh, seated in the host cell. In 10 hours, uh, only about 10, uh, about 1,000 uh, billions uh, are uh, bursted into the uh, host uh, organism. Uh, of course, uh, in order, sorry, this went the other way. Uh, why? I don't know. Yeah, okay. So in order to uh, manage to cope with the disease caused by this uh, virus, the COVID-19 disease, it is necessary to understand uh, the way how it hijacks the host immune system uh, and uh, how it manages to uh, miss lead to get to, to mislead the host immune reaction so that uh, it has uh, some free time uh, to uh, spread in the organism before the reaction. Actually, the phases of the uh, COVID-19 disease and the respective immune response uh, shown here uh, on this uh, table uh, indicate the the, the point and the source of the trouble. Uh, in principle, the prolonged incubation period of the virus, uh, uh, of the disease, SARS-CoV-2 disease, uh, suggests that uh, the virus uh, has managed to develop countermeasures against the immune system uh, in the non-severe stages of the disease, uh, 
the specific innate immune response and the adaptive immune response are active, and for most of the in most of the cases, uh, the disease stops uh, well. So an improvement starts at this point, but in some 10 to maybe 20 percent of the cases, the development uh, goes in the direction of acute phase with uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome and cytokine release syndrome characterizing the situation. It is actually this state of uh, abundance of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines related with uh, interferon-stimulated genes, which causes actually the uh, very uh, heavy uh, course of the disease and is actually the reason for uh, lethal uh, exit. So it is important to have a control of uh, over the development of the cytokine storm in its very early stages. It is attempted through immune modulators and cytokine antagonists. Uh, the key cytokines which are involved in this uh, over uh, react overexpressed uh, situation, so this abundance of cytokines in uh, the affected uh, organism, uh, are uh, interferon gamma uh, and uh, IL-6. Uh, these are uh, in interleukin-6, uh, IL-6. These two cytokines uh, are the subject of uh, our uh, study. And uh, uh, just a couple of words uh, to introduce them. Uh, these are uh, more or less of the same size cytokines, uh, uh, signaling molecules. Here we see uh, interferon gamma in, compact, in complex with its receptors, the spheres indicating the areas, the binding areas, so the places on the receptors where the cytokine binds. Uh, it is a non-covalent homodimer with uh, about 20 daltons of weight consisting of two chains uh, in anti-parallel orientation of 143 amino acids each. Uh, it plays an important, really a key role in the immune uh, signaling and uh, complete absence, complete lack of this uh, uh, cytokine is a very, very dangerous uh, situation. However, overexpression is not much better because it is associated with certain autoimmune diseases, among them the multiple sclerosis. Uh, the idea is to, uh, uh, there are two options to block the activity of this cytokine. One is by blocking the receptor via in inactive mutated forms, and the other is to block the cytokine binding sites. Uh, the other uh, cytokine, uh, which is of importance in the development of the cytokine storm is interleukin-6 um, or IL-6, which is, as I said, about the same weight, uh, uh, almost 24 deltons, uh, and it is uh, uh, it consists of several alpha helices, uh, which are uh, helices which are very completely bound uh, in a very compact conformation to each other. Uh, the level of this uh, cytokine in an, under normal conditions is very, very low. Uh, close to zero, but it can increase thousand times uh, under uh, uh, in the cases of infection, inflammation, or cancer. And this is the reason why it is used uh, as a bio. And for example, when in the blood tests, the C-reactive protein is measured, it is a direct uh, relation to the levels of uh, interleukin-6. Uh, it is important because uh, uh, plays a modulating role uh, for the um, coordination of the B and T cells, uh, regulation of the B and T cells involved in the immune response. And the inhibition of the IL-6 signaling is considered to have a therapeutic potential in cancer, autoimmune diseases, infections, and uh, well, in particular, COVID-19. Uh, the signaling uh, pathway of uh, interferon gamma is, as I said, the signaling complex, the biologically active complex is uh, the cytokine associated with its receptors. With interleukin-6, it's a bit more complicated because uh, here is a, a picture of uh, this uh, molecule, this cytokine. Uh, first, uh, uh, it binds to the alpha receptor, IL-6 uh, IL uh, receptor alpha, then uh, two such structures bind to a third receptor uh, omnipresent on the surface of many cells, uh, GP130. Two such triple structures, hexamerize, form the really, the actually biologically active complex that initiates the uh, signaling. There are different options uh, to stop uh, uh, or to interfere in this process. First is to uh, block uh, uh, 
IL-6 itself. And for example, an antibody named siltuximab uh, uh, does this, uh, or it is uh, uh, attempted to block uh, the receptor, alpha receptor, uh, analyzing antibody is allowed as uh, biological. Uh, the problem with this approach is, is that there are side effects. There is increased risk, increased risk of infection and uh, lack of specificity of this action. Another option would be to prevent the formation of the triple complex and that way stop the formation of the biologically active uh, signaling molecule. And uh, our approach is oriented also uh, in, towards in, in this direction. Instead of using antibodies, uh, a feasible alternative uh, in uh, this uh, case, so for, for interacting with cytokines and in one or another way preventing uh, them from uh, exerting their biological uh, function, uh, are uh, glucosaminoglycans. Uh, so, for example, heparin. Uh, heparin uh, is uh, a polymer, a polysaccharide uh, from 3 to 30 kilodaltons. It's a very uh, ununiformed in uh, the length of the chain's uh, structure. Uh, it's actually a variably uh, sulfated, repeated, repeating disaccharide units. You see them uh, here, an example. And the sulfate, uh, sulfate ion actually carries uh, negative electric charge, minus two. Uh, and this uh, repeated construction actually uh, explains uh, the most uh, important property of uh, heparin. And it is uh, the high density negative charge of this molecule. Uh, it is very highly uh, high charge density. and. Uh, makes the molecule extremely high biological active, biologically active. It binds to over 700 proteins, which is kind of a record uh, among uh, these molecules. Uh, in the medical practice, however, it is used not the heparin, the unfractionated form, but the low molecular weight heparin, the fractionated form, uh, which uh, is by definition a bit more uniform. Uh, at least 60% of the chains are short, so have a molecular weight below eight kilodaltons. The preference is given to this molecule because it has more predictable pharmacokinetics. And uh, from now on, when I say heparin, I will mean exactly the low molecular weight uh, version, the fractionated version. It is known, there is experimental evidence that uh, heparin binds to both uh, ron gamma and interleukin-6. Uh, and uh, due to this, it should have some influence on their activity. Uh, the objective of our study is to understand the molecular mechanism of uh, the anti-inflammatory action uh, of heparin due to the binding of to this. And our hypothesis is, the, is that actually uh, through binding to the cytokines, heparin impairs the formation of the two biologically active complexes of interferon with, it, with its receptor and the uh, IL-6 with uh, the receptor IL-6-alpha and uh, the GP-130, which is sometimes even called IL-6-beta uh, receptor. And by this uh, uh, impairment of the formation of the two biologically active complexes, uh, heparin uh, actually impairs the prevents the uh, signaling, uh, the, the activation of the respective signaling pathways. So the approach is a, a series of in silico experiments consisting of course in uh, reconstruction, in production of the necessary structures, for example, the full length uh, interferon gamma homodimer, uh, formation, uh, investigation of the uh, uh, structures, completion, uh, and uh, identification the uh, contact areas and binding sites, and simulation of the uh, binding, uh, heparin binding uh, itself, followed by structure analysis and visualization. Uh, the uh, molecular dynamic simulations performed uh, are with the package uh, Gromax. Uh, here is uh, a protocol, well, the typical protocol used in these simulations. And for the purposes of uh, this study, we have uh, performed uh, the series of uh, simulations uh, of uh, interferon uh, 
APO form and in complex with uh, uh, representative uh, hexasaccharides, uh, polysaccharides, well, representative heparin molecules, uh, which are, as you see, very long uh, altogether to microseconds of simulations and shorter simulations, but still long enough for the purposes of this study uh, of uh, interleukin and uh, it complex with uh, heparin and with receptor and uh, heparin. So for the structure of interferon gamma, we have uh, uh, used uh, our uh, earlier result for reproduction of the uh, full uh, structure because in the crystallographic databases, uh, the flexible C-terminal domain is missing. Uh, for IL-6 uh, and the complex, uh, we have uh, used uh, structures from PDB with uh, the IDs uh, given on uh, this side and uh, slide. And for the uh, mole molecule for a representative uh, heparin molecule, so low molecular weight heparin molecule, we have uh, uh, used based uh, on uh, literature studies, uh, searches, a uh, representative molecule, which is a hexasaccharide with a net charge of uh, minus nine. And the structure of this representative molecule here, uh, its uh, composition is represented uh, by this uh, uh, sequence. Uh, with this uh, uh, set, we uh, uh, start with our results uh, on, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sorry, yes, on uh, binding simulations of uh, uh, interferon. Uh, we have uh, used as initial conformation, we have uh, uh, placed uh, four uh, molecules in a close proximity to the uh, cytokine for representative uh, saccharides, hexasaccharides, so heparin molecules. And in all three simulations, the uh, details vary from simulation uh, from one to the other, but uh, the general pattern is the same. Uh, all four uh, uh, hexasaccharides bind uh, to uh, the cytokine and uh, uh, are on the surface in the areas which uh, exhibit a positive uh, charge uh, density, which is expectable uh, because of the high negative charge density of the uh, uh, zaccharides. What is important for uh, this whole process? First of all, uh, it uh, is important uh, how the binding affects uh, the structure of uh, interferon molecule. Uh, here are the secondary structure plots. Uh, this uh, top left corner is the uh, interferon, and the other three are the binding simulations. Uh, well, it is difficult to, to follow uh, details on these four plots, but what is, what is uh, evident is that if changes occur from this to the other co compared to these other three situations, they are here in the lower part of the tables, which uh, correspond to uh, the region from 120 to uh, amino second above. And this is exactly the flexible C-terminal domain. So the secondary structure in the other part of the molecule, the globular part of the molecule remains highly unchanged, while certain changes appear in the terminal C terminal domain. The dynamics of the binding process can be followed by investigating the time uh, course, the development in time of the pair contacts between uh, interferon gamma and the hexasaccharides. Here is a uh, uh, plot, well, a uh, uh, result, if average plot for the three binding simulations showed uh, separately on the right panel. In the left panel is the average over these three simulations. What is seen is that very rapidly from the very beginning, pair contact formations starts and it is associated, it corresponds to the binding of the first uh, two uh, zaccharides. Uh, when uh, two uh, zaccharides are bound, the third is attached uh, with a slow, uh, uh, small delay, and then we have kind of saturation. Uh, 
what is the point here? The point is that with two zeharides uh, uh, attached to the molecule, the charge uh, of the whole complex is, becomes neutral. Uh, the whole complex becomes electrically neutral. And with the third uh, hexazac attached, it uh, is already negative. It has negative ele net electric charge. And uh, in order to have the fourth uh, uh, sugar bound to this uh, initial complex, uh, it is uh, a bit more time needed because then uh, actually the molecule searches, uh, explores the space for areas with a locally positive uh, density. For example, we will see this on the contact plots. We will see this uh, where these areas are. The contact map uh, of these uh, contacts shows uh, this is the frequency, the occupation frequency of the context for the last 20, 200 nanoseconds of the simulations uh, from blue, uh, to which is zero, to uh, lila or whatever, which is one, increasing uh, occupancy. We see that actually these contacts are formed in the region 140, uh, 20 to 140, so the C-terminal domains. Also, between 86 and 99 amino acid, there is tetrapeptide, which is a positively charged part of the uh, molecule as well. Uh, so, the ability of the complex was investigated by studying the hydrogen bonds formed uh, between the uh, heparin and the four sugars. And we see that bound state is uh, stabilized through a uh, number of uh, a relatively high number of uh, hydrogen bonds, seven. To uh, and uh, this means that these uh, constructions are very stable. Uh, on this uh, uh, slide is uh, shown the uh, electrostatic surface of uh, interferon uh, alone. Uh, and here is we in, in complex with uh, the uh, heparin molecules. Here we have a dipole moments depicted of uh, the interferon and of the complex uh, of interferon with the receptor. We see their ideally parallel orientation. And of course, for this, this absolutely nice uh, charge distribution is crucial. This uh, substantially distorted charge distribution, so electrostatic potential surface upon uh, heparin binding, makes actually practically impossible uh, such collinearity and the formation of the process or the, on the electrostatic uh, reasons. Why do we expect a reduction of the biological activity of uh, the uh, interference through this binding is uh, shown at best on this plot where we investigated the secondary, uh, the solvent accessible surface area uh, of, uh, uh, HIPAA, of uh, interferon uh, of, uh, uh, shown here with black for the molecule, which is uh, in uh, in the apple form, so uh, alone. And here are uh, the uh, results from the three binding simulations. So we have here a substantial decrease of uh, the solvent accessible surface area, which uh, means that the biological activity will be reduced. For the IL-6 molecule, the situation is uh, different. Uh, here is a picture of the complex uh, IL-6, uh, IL-6 receptor alpha and the GP-130. Uh, uh, from this structure, the binding sites uh, have been identified, so the involved amino acids are um, mostly responsible for binding. Uh, the point is that uh, IL-6 is uh, uh, neutral, is a neutral molecule, so there is no a priori aspect uh, that electrostatic would play uh, a substantial role in uh, the binding to heparin. However, uh, in the binding uh, uh, simulations, we see uh, here is uh, IL-6 molecule and here is uh, the heparin molecule, representative heparin molecule. This is the same picture from another in another uh, What we see is actually that heparin uh, very well, perfectly well accommodates itself in uh, a binding pocket, uh, so to say in a pocket which is uh, in blue, uh, is the area of uh, the IL-6 molecule, which is uh, positively charged. So it actually accommodates itself in the positively charged pocket. The, uh, there are no substantial structural changes in this case as well. Uh, the interns uh, are actually polar, determined by the charge distribution, and the amino acids uh, uh, which uh, are involved in the uh, interaction uh, in heparin binding uh, 
are highlighted here, and these are all amino acids which actively participate in the binding uh, site of the molecule. In particular, uh, in binding site one, these are uh, these two arginines, and in the binding site two are the amino acids depicted here. Upon binding to heparin, uh, the, the two arginines are already involved in uh, uh, heparin inter. Uh, IL-6 binding, so they are not so to say free, uh, freely available to form the complex with the receptor. Uh, here is uh, 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 decree the change of the uh, solvent accessible surface area of the uh, amino acids uh, uh, which are uh, involved in the binding sites of uh, IL-6, and we see uh, the uh, blue uh, color is uh, the molecule with, uh, with uh, red orange is uh, in complex with heparin, here for IL-6 and here for, for IL-6 plus IL-6 receptor alpha. Uh, these amino acids for which the change in the, uh, in, uh, the surf solvent accessible surface area was uh, highest, so exceeded the standard deviation. And again, we have amino acids which are involved in the uh, binding site formation, mostly affected by uh, heparin binding. Uh, this is to assume that uh, upon heparin binding, uh, uh, actually the possibility uh, of uh, IL-6 to bind to its receptor IL and then to the GP130 is diminished. And uh, an important point here is that uh, uh, magnesium ions, so two valent ions, positive, play an important role in stabilizing this uh, complex. In particular, uh, by uh, in this stabilized complex, becomes uh, mostly affected also uh, this uh, 31 uh, tyrosine residuum, which is very important for the biological activity of the action. I'm coming to my conclusions. Take home uh, what uh, uh, were the results of our investigation. Investigations. Uh, here is actually what was written in with words uh, shown also in the picture for bad rising, so to say. Uh, interferon acts uh, uh, very uh, actively, binds actively uh, to inter uh, in heparin, binds to interferon gamma, to interleukin uh, 6, and it also to the complex IL 6, IL 6 receptor alpha, forming very is shown here in this intermediate stage, and by forming these stable complexes, it prevents the formation of biologically active signaling complexes along with its receptor in the triple complex IL-6 IL receptor alpha receptor beta. This uh, leads to the conclusion that he a potent anti-inflammatory agent due to its ability to engage with two uh, of the key cytokines in the development of the cytokine storm. The the action of heparin does not depend actually on the virus type and even in general, more general, on the cause of the inflammation process itself. Uh, in addition to the well known anticoagulant activity, which is the reason to uh, apply uh, heparin in the treatment of COVID 19, it exhibits anti inflammatory antiviral activity, so it's a threefold activity. Uh, and uh, an added benefit is that actually heparin is a well-known medication, the World Health Organization list of essential medicines, so it is very well studied. Uh, side effects well known, so in this sense, it's a safe uh, um, suggestion for a treatment procedure. I want to thank to our uh, colleagues from uh, biological, uh, experimental biological colleagues uh, and uh, the funding agencies, and of course, for the computational resources which made possible this uh, research. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I'm ready to, thank you. Happy to hear questions. Um, so I see that there are several uh, questions in the chart, uh, in the chat. The first one is, is there any reason why you were using the version 507 and not the more recent one? Uh, I, uh, sorry, I, I was reading the second question. Uh, uh, anyway. Uh, well, this the study was started when this was the, the most recent version, and we haven't repeated the long simulations with a newer one. And um, we would not expect to have substantial changes. Why should it be a change because of uh, 
yeah, we do not expect to have uh, substantial changes. Uh, I'm reading uh, in the chat actually about the hexazaccharides. How did you decide that the hexazaccharide with such specific composition is a good representative, a good representation of uh, LMVH? Uh, is a complex mixture. Uh, well, how did we decide it? As I said, a literature study. Uh, when you make simulations, you have to change uh, to, to select a representative molecule. It is uh, not reasonable to make uh, several molecules uh, uh, together. What is important is actually, we have tried actually two different structures, I must say, but uh, for two different representative structures, but the results are actually, uh, the differences are uh, um, so uh, the important point is to have electric charge, which should be able to uh, uh, make the molecule visible for the um, interferon, in particular in the case with the interferon. And uh, uh, yes, uh, it is also associated with the computational resources available, of course, one should not forget that. Uh, yeah, there is a, this is also an important point. And uh, I think there was maybe one more question. Yes, again. Uh, yes, uh, have you planned to, to validate your results experimentally? How feasible uh, is it? Uh, yes, we have experimental validation uh, of the results uh, about uh, interferon gamma. Uh, it is that I haven't uh, demonstrated these uh, results because of the scope of uh, the school, but uh, we have uh, experimental validation uh, of uh, the block of the influence of the influence of the heparin binding on the biological activity of uh, uh, interferon gamma. For interleukin-6, uh, we uh, rely on uh, data from the literature, but we have not yet, we have not, we haven't planned, uh, we do not plan on experimental studies, um, also because of uh, practical reasons uh, that is, it is difficult to find somebody to perform this research. It is uh, not very commonly used in the studies molecule, it turns out. Okay, um, thank you. Um...